Hi everyone, Dave Verdun here from innovationtutorials.com. Welcome back, unless of course you're a first time visitor, then welcome for the first time. So have you ever heard the saying, form follows function? This phrase comes from an architect in the early 1900s. And his thoughts were, tell me what the building is supposed to do, and I'll tell you what it looks like. So the argument was that function or the job of the building is first and its shape, aesthetics, and its form is secondary. And that argument is very rational and can apply to many different things. Now, there's some people that believe the opposite, function follows form, is a better way to look at things. Now, this debate can last for hours, but in interest of time, there's at least a few arguments against form following function. And the one I'd like to address is for innovation and inventive thinking. Using the opposite, function follows form can yield some very interesting ideas. So you'll find this reverse and counterintuitive thinking has um, some big advantages when it comes to coming up with new ideas. And that's exactly what attribute dependency does. So in this tutorial, you're going to learn how the logic of function follows form is used to generate interesting and unobvious ideas. You'll also learn a five-step approach for attribute dependency. And you'll see three different types of dependencies that you want to consider along the way. And lastly, we'll show you how to accelerate the process of using attribute dependency using a simple app. And then we'll give you examples on everything I just talked about. And what attribute dependency does is it does one of two things. It either breaks existing symmetries in the existing product or service, or it proposes new dependencies or relationships between existing product attributes. That's what form follows function means. So you can look at the F-117 Stealth Fighter. In its job, the customer's need was determined first, and one of the big jobs was to avoid radar detection. Now let's contrast that to function follows form, which is much more counterintuitive. So the second part of this algorithm is to determine what job, unmet need, or new function can this new hypothetical concept do for the customer. So it's kind of counterintuitive. We're first creating a solution, and then secondly, we're saying, what can this solution do? And across the left side of the matrix would be all the internal attributes. And across the top of the matrix would be first internal and then external attributes. Now, each intersection represents a possible hypothetical concept. Also change, as a matter of fact, they change by just having multiple sizes. You don't have to do anything when you go in a store to find many different shoe sizes of the model that you want. That's a passive dependency. Internal attribute here was the size of the bar or motor. External attribute was the size of the tree. You had many different options and that's a passive attribute. This picture here shows a small child and a large adult, and you can see how they adjusted one to make it easier for the other. Internal attribute is the speed of the wipers. External attribute is the amount of rain. And the external attribute is the IQ of the user. So if you're familiar with the Nest thermostat, it's a smart thermostat. And you never know what you're going to find. So you'll just click through and you'll see all kinds of different 